It wouldn't be talking about the Broncos if we didn't talk about Fangio's defense. Um, a guy that kind of uses some heavy zone usage, um, walks linebackers up above centers, goes with those like four, three under formations, creates advantageous positions for his D linemen. Can he slow down? I guess he's not going to be the only one doing it. He has players on the field, but can the Broncos defense slow down Patrick Mahomes? What do you think um, presents good matchups for them? And then also maybe some areas you're worried about as they face a Chiefs offense that man it has been kind of inconsistent this season. Well, Fangio's model for defending Mahomes has been the model everyone has copied. <clears throat> and what that is, is, as you mentioned, too deep, play zone. Um, basically, you're, you're leaning, you're, you're shading your strength in numbers on the coverage side, hoping you can get home with four rushers. Because when you blitz Patrick Mahomes, just like all the greats, you're going to pay the price. And yep. so Fangio figured out early on that, hey, if we're going to beat Mahomes, we got to keep an extra safety deep at all times play throw different you know varieties of zones at them and we got to get home with four and that's what you saw teams but it's not as easy I mean it's easier said than done not every team is set up to consistently get to the quarterback with four rushers sometimes they got to manufacture blitzes they got to get creative and anytime teams have had to do that for the most part against Mahomes he makes him pay and so Fangio I think you're going to see more of the same however if he has a trump card I think this time around it's Patrick Sertan and not by, I'm not saying like, Oh, you know, cause he's so good. He's going to shut everyone down on the outside. No, I think they're going to move him around in this game. I will not be surprised if you see Pat Sertan pulled off the boundary at times to shadow your tight end. All right. Kelsey has been the biggest Achilles Hill. I mean, Tyreek Hill's had some big games against the Broncos. Don't get me wrong. Mahomes obviously is the, the uh, consistent thread here, but Travis Kelsey has been the singular biggest thorn in Denver's side when they've faced the Chiefs. And listening to Ed Donatel today, he said they're going to throw Justin Simmons, Sertan, and the other rookie safety, who I forgot to mention, Caden Stearns, and who's been also really good this year. Um, they're going to use kind of a village, but I think you're going to see a lot more of Sertan on Kelsey this week. Yeah, and I think really Denver um... – Brandon Staley uses a lot of those Fangio principles as well, or at least he did. It's kind of something where people think that it's just the cover two that's slowing down the Chiefs and some other quarterbacks in the NFL. It's not only that, it's the refusal to blitz. It's the, I think Fangio, man, the way he disguises his stuff, like there's a lot of post snap motion that happens really, really quick in his defenses. And I think Mahomes, He's had some games, and I hate making comparisons. I'm not trying to do that. Against the Patriots, Bill Belichick, has he's the king of disguising stuff and really you know, being a creative guy. Fangio's up there. Man, he's a really bright defensive mind, um, I think, especially for a Chiefs offense that doesn't have a extremely reliable second wide receiver right now. Kelsey at tight end, he's been banged up and inconsistent this year. Um, Tyreek Hill's been banged up. Pretty consistent, though. I mean, McCole Hardman's not going to beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Byron Pringle has been the Chiefs' number two receiver this year, um, which Pringle's a fine wideout, but most teams he's probably a three or a four. Um, so the Chiefs, they're going to have their work cut out for him. With that said, um, Chad, I'm going to put you on the spot for a score pick, and which team do you think is going to come out victorious in this one? Man, score picks to me, it's like – It's unpredictable, it's especially mumbo this year. jumbo you know, yep. like – I'll just tell you this. I think the Broncos are going to lose a close game. Um, I think this one, they will get their dander up. They are going to come hot. Chiefs are going to get their best shot, but it's not going to be good enough in this particular game. The Broncos, though, are going to end up celebrating uh, down the road a little bit of a moral victory, all right, because they were close. No cigar at the end of the day, but they were close. A blowout here ends Denver's season it completely pulls the rug out from under them emotionally, spiritually, a close loss to the chiefs. I think they, the coaches can find a way to sell that to the team as, Hey, we are almost there. We're close. Let's keep, you know, trucking down the stretch. So I think the Broncos come up short. I mean, they've only won 19 times ever in Arrowhead mm -hmm. and they haven't beat the chiefs since well, the last time they beat the chiefs week two, 2015 at Arrowhead. So just hostile, especially in the month of December, I don't see this being some magical game where the stars 
finally aligned for Denver to break all these different distinctions, right? Like all these outlier um, factors that hold them back against the Chiefs. They'll fight hard. I think that last week's win against the Chargers is more the real Broncos than the previous game against Philly, but they just don't have the horses, too many injuries. They're talented. They've got some youth, but the Chiefs, still one of the top two, three, four teams in the NFL. They'll come up a little bit short. Yeah, man. I really like that. The whole bumbo jumbo score thing. I really do hate it. Um, I do it because I have to, I'm going to do it. I do it too. Page- I, we yeah. do it every Friday in the round table. I just, I hate doing it. Yeah. I'm going to take a page out of your book and I'll, I'll post score predictions on Sunday. Um, I think it's going to be a two score game, but I think it's going to be closer to a 10 point win for the Chiefs. I'm going to pay some respect to the Broncos. Like you said, they are very talented, but man, they're so banged up. If the Chiefs get out to a lead, maybe Denver abandons the run a little bit. Like we've talked about Bridgewater. He's not necessarily the guy, even with those weapons to will you back into a game. If Denver can start the game well, I think that really bodes well for how they can play. If they can dictate how the Chiefs play, it's a whole different ball game. If the Chiefs start off hot and get up 14 nothing or whatever, it's not going to look too good. So with that said, man, these two teams still play again this season. The Chiefs have a ton of AFC West stuff coming up um, the rest of the year. The Broncos, I don't think they're going to go away. They're a team that's going to be in the mix, I think, until the very end, especially in a very unpredictable AFC. Um, I think one thing you can count on is, well, I guess two things you can count on. One, the AFC West being strong. Um, the second one, Mile High Huddle being the go-to place for Denver Broncos content. Follow them. Follow Chad on Twitter. Again, Chad and Jensen. Um, Chad, thanks a lot for coming on, man. Hey, my pleasure. Great talking shop with you. And uh, we'll have to do this again when they meet up. 